Good evening tonight, President Trump's news reaction to the Mueller report. Time to turn the tables, he now says, and go after what he says are, quote, very sick and dangerous people. Who is he wanting to seek retribution against? We'll take a look at that. Also, what the report reveals about the frequent and seemingly reflexive dishonesty of the president and some of the people around him. Or as CNN political analyst Maggie Haberman puts in the New York Times, along with the Times' Peter Baker, and I'm quoting, the White House that emerges from more than 400 pages of Mr. Mueller's report is a hotbed of conflict infused by a culture of dishonesty, defined by a president who lies to the public and his own staff, then tries to get his aides to lie for him. Utah Republican Senator Mitt Romney, he's also weighing in with a statement that reads, in part, it is good news that there was insufficient evidence to charge the president of the United States with having conspired with a foreign adversary or with having obstructed justice. Even so, he continues, I'm sickened at the extent and pervasiveness of dishonesty and misdirection by individuals in the highest office of the land, including the president. As the report shows, he and his subordinates lied again and again, lied about McGahn, lied about interfering with the special counsel, lied about the firing of Comey, lied about business deals in Russia, lied about seeking Clinton emails, lied about the purpose of the Trump Tower meeting, lied about his role in lying about the Trump Tower meeting, and that's just some of the lies. So let's get started. We begin with President Trump's new take on the Mueller report. Remember, after the Barr summary was released weeks ago, this is how the president and some of the people around him saw it. It was a complete and total exoneration. I think everyone here um, and everyone, frankly, across America was happy. We had the full and fair and thorough investigation, $25 million plus of taxpayer dollars, 500 witnesses, over a million documents. This, the Mueller investigation, is the gold standard. Mueller report was great. It could not have been better. It said no obstruction, no collusion. It could not have been better. And I do see some people now trying to besmirch the integrity of Director Mueller, Attorney General Barr. That that is really rich. This the Mueller investigation is the gold standard. I'm having a good day too. It was called No Collusion, No Obstruction. So that last line was from yesterday morning. All the other was right after the, uh, the summary uh, by Barr was released. Now, this morning, here's what the president tweeted about the gold standard report, as Kellyanne Conway called it, and the honorable Robert Mueller. And I'm quoting now, statements are made about me by certain people in the crazy Mueller report, in itself written by 12, 18 angry Democrat Trump haters, which are fabricated and totally untrue. Watch out for people that take so-called notes when the notes never existed until needed because I never agreed to testify, it was not necessary for me to respond to statements made in the quote-unquote report about me, some of which are total BS and only given to make the other person look good or me to look bad. This was an illegally started hoax that never should have happened. A, And then he left the rest of whatever he had to say hanging for about nine hours before continuing this. Big fat waste of time, energy, and money, $30 million to be exact, it is now finally time to turn the tables and bring justice to some very sick and dangerous people who have committed very serious crimes, perhaps even spying or treason. This should never happen again. 45th President of the United States calling the Republican former director of the FBI, Robert Mueller, or his report, crazy, and suggesting others, perhaps including Mueller, though it's hard to say from the tweet, are criminals or even traitors. A president who doesn't like it when subordinates, in this case apparently former White House counsel Don McGahn, takes, takes notes perhaps because having someone write down what you're saying makes it harder to lie about it later, which the Mueller report documents extensively. Better, as McGahn says, the president told him to emulate Roy Cohn, the late, disbarred, disgraced, red-baiting, gay-hating, therefore self-hating mob lawyer. Reading now from page 117 of the Mueller report, on efforts the president made to fire the special counsel, what about these notes? Why do you take notes? Lawyers don't take notes. I never had a lawyer who took notes. McGahn responded that he keeps notes because he is, quote, or a, quote, real lawyer, and explained that notes create a record and are not a bad thing. The president said, I've had a lot of great lawyers like Roy Cohn. He did not take notes. Even as he was questioning McGahn about the notes, he was also trying to duck responsibility for getting rid of Mueller. Quoting again from the report, the president asked McGahn, did I say the word fire? McGahn responded, what you said is call Rod, Rod, Rod Rosenstein, tell Rod that Mueller has conflicts and can't be the special counsel. The president responded, I never said that. So the question is, who are you going to believe, the president or Don McGahn, the White House counsel, who kept contemporaneous notes? You be the judge. This is the kind of routine dishonesty that Mitt Romney is talking about and that can be found on page after page of the Mueller report. 
Here's page 67 of volume one. It reads, between 2013 and June 2016, several employees of the Trump Organization, including then president of the organization, Donald J. Trump, pursued a Moscow deal with several Russian counterparties, a deal potentially worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Yet here's what the president said about it during the campaign transition and into the White House. And I have nothing to do with Russia. I don't have any jobs in Russia. Now, I'm all over the world, but we're not involved in Russia. I know nothing about the inner workings of Russia. I don't deal there. I have no businesses. I have no loans from Russia. I have no dealings with Russia. I have no deals in Russia. I have no deals that could happen in Russia because we've stayed away. Another fabrication was the statement which the president crafted about the Trump Tower meeting, describing it as primarily about adopting Russian children when it was actually about gathering Russian obtained dirt on Hillary Clinton. And so was the claim by Sarah Sanders that FBI agents supported the firing of James Comey. So what's your response to these rank and file FBI agents who, who disagree with your contention that they lost faith in, in Director Comey? Look, we've heard from uh, countless members of the FBI that say very different things. What led you in the White House to believe that uh, he had lost the confidence in the rank and file of the FBI when the acting director says it's exactly the opposite? Well, I can speak to my own personal experience. I've heard from countless uh, members of the FBI that are grateful and thankful for the president's decision. She personally heard from countless members of the FBI. That was a lie. And what's fascinating about it is that Sir Sanders admitted it was unfounded under oath. Reading now from the report, Sanders told this office that her reference to hearing from, quote, countless members of the FBI, unquote, was a, quote, slip of the tongue, unquote. She also recalled that her statement in a separate press interview that rank-and-file FBI agents had lost confidence in Comey was a comment she made, quote, in the heat of the moment, end quote, that was not founded on anything, according to the Mueller report. So it was two slips of the tongue on two consecutive days about the same subject, but Sir Sanders did at least admit under oath that it was factually unfounded, which makes what she said just this morning on ABC's Good Morning America so remarkable, and yet, given her record, kind of so predictable. So actually, if you look at what I said, I said the slip of the tongue was in using the word countless, uh, but there were a number of FBI, both former and current, that agreed with the president's decision, and they've continued to speak out and say that and send notice to the White House uh, of that agreement with the president's decision. Sarah, hold on a second. The special counsel writes that those comments were not founded on anything. That's what you talked to the special counsel about when you were facing criminal penalties if you didn't tell the truth, but now you're trying to walk away from it. Why can't you acknowledge that what you said no, then was not, not true? I said that the word I used, countless, and I also said if you look at what's in quotations from me, it's that, and it's that it was in the heat of the moment, meaning that it wasn't a scripted talking point. I'm sorry that I wasn't a robot like the Democrat Party that went out for two and a half years and stated time and time again that there was definitely Russian collusion between the president and his campaign. So that happened this morning. By the way, it, if what she said was actually a slip of the tongue, uh, twice a slip of the tongue and not founded on anything, why didn't she correct herself? A minute later or an hour later or a day later or a week later if it was just a slip of the tongue she had no problem letting it stand as fact and the incredible thing is if she had corrected herself what do you think would the president have applauded her for her honesty or whispered behind her back to other people that she was weak for admitting an error i think we all know the answer to that question reaction now to all of it joining us author and strategic analyst retired army lieutenant colonel ralph peters um Colonel Peters, we've talked a lot about this. I, this is the first time I'm talking to you since you've read the report or you've seen it. What, are you surprised by it in any way? Because a lot of the information was out there. Well, yes, it was out there, much of it. But when you see it presented so methodically, well, without emotion, mm. um, the case seems overwhelming to me. I'm obviously not a lawyer, but to a layperson... The case for obstruction, you're saying. Justice. And as far as the um, Russian contacts go... There's some things that the Mueller report didn't cover because they were just outside of his lane. The fundamental question for me remains, why is the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, so slavishly subordinate to Vladimir Putin? Why will he do his best to block congressionally mandated sanctions? Why did the Republican platform change in 2016 to hurt Ukraine and help Russia? 
Why does he have to meet behind closed doors with Vladimir Putin? And, and so on and so on. Um, there, the report is not the end. It's a milestone, but there's much more to come. Do you, you don't believe the Mueller's conclusion? Because, I mean, it, the, you know, it's an extensive investigation that there was no conspiracy between members of the Trump campaign or the president and uh, Russians working no, for the government. There may have been no conspiracy between the campaign for, for various reasons. Incompetence is not the least of them. It takes a marginal degree of competence to organize an effective conspiracy. I am talking about the individual Donald J. Trump. And we don't know why, why he is, is slavish to Putin. 